Hello, this is Pris, and this is part two uh, of the chapter uh, from the book Seeing Angels. And we finished with uh, some examples of times in the New Testament and Old Testament when God sent angels for healing. But now uh, the next section is called New Wine Angels. Several years ago, a group of healing angels showed up during one of my meetings at Winter Camp Meeting in Ashland, Virginia. I don't, didn't see them at first, but Sister Jane Louder, the camp director, saw in a vision that they were present. When she shared what she was seeing, I could certainly feel their presence in the room, and she went on to describe their unusual appearance. They were wearing hospital scrubs, looking like doctors or nurses. This was one of the ways we knew these were healing angels. God was giving Sister Jane a visual understanding of their purpose for coming into the meeting. Each of these healing angels came into the room carrying what appeared to be an intravenous drip. God made it known to us through a prophetic word that instead of there being natural medicine inside their bags, these IVs were filled with supernatural new wine. Matthew explains new wine as a fresh movement of God that cannot be seen through the eyes that only recognize old ways of doing things. Neither do people pour new wine into old wineskins. If they do, the skins will burst, and the wine will run out, and the wineskins will be ruined. No, they pour new wine into new wineskins, and both are preserved, Matthew 9, 17. In this case, the new wine was the life of the Spirit and heavenly healing for those who were thirsty for it. I understood that these angels were being assigned to various individuals present in the meeting, those who had been standing in faith for a long time, and I felt as though... They couldn't stand much longer. God was giving them a heavenly jump start, an angelic infusion of new wine for strength, restoration, and healing. In that meeting, there was no struggle or striving for miracles. Those angels had been sent to bring the flow of God's goodness into the lives of those who desperately needed it. I have become aware of these same angels several times since that initial counter, and whenever I see them, I mention it to those who are present. These new wine angels come to minister a direct infusion of healing and welcome. We need to welcome God's healing angels into your life and learn how to cultivate an atmosphere for miracles to occur with ease. Special deliveries from heaven. Because angels are ministering spirits sent to serve the heirs of salvation, they love to bring us special deliveries from heaven. Many people who have been caught up to behold the glories of heaven have reported seeing a large warehouse containing what seems to be unlimited spare body parts needed by people on earth. We understand that our prayers and declarations of healing cause creative miracles to come forth. And in the spirit realm, we are simply moving those much needed body parts from heaven to earth. And one of the ways God allows those creative miracles to come in is through the ministry service of his healing angels. Once, while I was ministering at the healing rooms in Spokane, Washington, I saw in a vision what appeared to be a life jacket being carried by an angel. In my spirit, I understood that this represented a new pair of lungs being delivered through the ministry of a healing angel. Our lungs really do serve a life-saving function, absolutely. Uh, especially in these days of masks. I declared what I was seeing and sure enough, a lady approached me after the meeting and told me that those lungs had been for her. She said that as I was declaring the miracle, she could breathe deeper and more fully than ever before. In the past, she always felt winded and had trouble walking any distance without becoming short of breath. But that night, she received her miracle and her breathing changed. She believed she had received those new lungs. Hallelujah. Since I have asthma, I appreciate that one. I have had. Anyway, I know I'm going to be healed too. In the spirit, I saw many other healings that night, and as I declared them by faith, I knew that healing angels were being dispatched to minister to those who needed a touch of God in their physical bodies. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. Healing angels with backpacks. <laughs> My friend Joan Hunter has a great healing ministry, and she is operating this gift for many years, but only recently she discovered that God had assigned healing angels not only to her ministry as a whole, but also to the individual services where she ministers. As she was preaching in one meeting, she saw angels hovering over the people in attendance, and she wrote, 
these angels didn't have wings. They had an arm span. They were gliding like flying over the congregation, and each of them had a big hump on his back, and I couldn't figure it out. I couldn't make out what the bump was or hump was. So often in the spiritual realm, we see things that we don't make sense to us in the natural, and when this happens, we must remain at peace and continue pressing forward, trusting the answers will come as God sees fit. Don't become distressed if something doesn't make sense to you at first. As long as you have the peace of God, you can rest in him. Joan began to call out words of knowledge for healing and creative miracles, particularly a new heart. She continued the story. Instantly, I saw this angel reach back into the hump, and at that moment, the person I was praying for moved abruptly as if he had been hit by something. In that moment, he received a brand new heart. Joan continued to describe those humps on the backs of the angels as if they were backpacks filled with body parts needed for that particular service. Some people have seen angels bringing gifts into meetings in various size boxes filled with body parts, healing oil, or other blessings. I have seen these healing angels come in many different ways. The method or appearance isn't what matters. The ministry fruit that remains is what is important to us. When you learn how to work with these angels, and we will get to that in later chapters, the results will be phenomenal. Although some people may try to dismiss your awareness of these angels, it will become impossible for them to dismiss the results. If you want to move in greater healing ministry, you must learn how to move with the healing angels who have been assigned to work with you. Healing angels assist in supernatural surgery. And I just want to add that, you know, God is going to move many of you into healing because there's a whole lot of people that need healing and that are going to need healing, especially after this COVID thing. Okay, healing angels assist in supernatural surgery. When I was a teenager, he says, my pastor's wife had a heavenly experience at the altar of our church one Sunday. The Lord and his angels began performing supernatural surgery on her heart. She had suffered from a weak heart for the majority of her life, but as she was caught up in the glory realms, it was as though she was lying on heaven's operating table. As God and his angels performed open heart surgery on her during this supernatural encounter, God physically replaced her damaged heart with a brand new one. After this happened, she returned to her doctor for a checkup and received the exciting report. Without natural explanation, her heart was now like that of a 16-year-old. God had physically healed her, and it was glorious. Healing angels can minister to much more than a physical ailment or pain. The scriptures promise he heals the broken in heart and binds up their wounds. Your heart is important to God, and he places a high value on it. See Proverbs 4.23. Personally, I believe that he does some of his heart healing through the ministry service of angels. We know that there are many angels who surround God and work in his presence, and just being in that atmosphere changes everything. In our meetings around the world, we often hear testimonies from people reporting that God has healed their hearts emotionally. Sometimes people have carried deep guilt, shame, regret, or rejection in their hearts for many years, Excuse me, and God wants to heal your heart from that too. I believe he has commissioned angels over your life to help you heal from past wounds and to encourage your heart to be open for all the love he desires to bring into your life today and tomorrow. If you're ready to start seeing angels, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I know that you are the great physician and that all healing comes from you. I stand in agreement with your word for complete healing and total healing to manifest in my spirit, mind, and body. I command every spirit of sickness and infirmity to leave as you send your angels of healing to surround my life and minister your healing touch to me. I choose, oh, to step into the miracle waters of your spirit and life. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Ha, ha. Okay. And I think that's the end of chapter three. And I don't know if we have time for much of this, but maybe I'll start Angels of Abundant Provision. The blessing of the Lord, it makes rich, and he added no, adds no sorrow with it. He said, I have several angels of provision who travel with me and watch over the financial affairs of our family and ministry. 
One of those angels is named Prosperity, and Prosperity stands about nine feet tall. He's very joyful. I've never heard him speak a word, but I've often heard him laugh, and when he does, it's always one of those deep, infectious belly laughs. Prosperity's laugh makes me laugh, too, for somehow that manifestation of joy is connected with the supernatural manifestation of provision that he brings. His laughter seems to change the atmosphere. The reason for this, I've discovered, is that Prosperity carries the atmosphere of heaven's abundance with him so that everywhere he goes there is a shimmering sparkle and glow in the air around him sometimes we even get to see these spiritual sparkles begin to manifest around us in the natural as a golden glory something else unique about prosperity is this although his skin seems to be like porcelain he has golden hair golden coins and continually pouring off of his luminescent robe he is dripping with what appears to be liquid gold this is the visible manifestation of the gift prosperity has been sent to deliver. It literally leaves a trail of blessing behind him wherever he goes. Um, we know from the scriptures that prosperity isn't only about money. It's about health and um, life in the spirit. So I've never seen prosperity fly, he says, and I don't think he has any wings. At least I've never seen them. But I suppose it's possible for him to move in any way the Lord needs him to. Another thing I should mention is that although prosperity is covered in beautiful gold representing the gold and riches of God and seems to disperse his riches freely, he is very humble. He never brings any glory to himself. Instead, he serves the purposes of God to bring all glory to Jesus Christ. I have seen his deep humility on the few occasions when I've had the privilege of looking into his fascinating hazel eyes. All I could see was the glory of God. The true blessing of God always points you not to the blessing itself, but to the one who blesses. God's angels are carriers who deliver God's blessings, but they are never the one from whom the blessings originate. That's why we must learn to always point our hearts and eyes towards Jesus. Unusual types of provision. There are many different types of angels of provision that we can discover within the sacred scriptures, although they may not be apparent at first glance. God has many angels of prosperity, angels of blessing, angels of financial replenishment, and angels of abundant wealth and overflow. And each time they appear in the lives of God's people, they bring with them an array of extraordinary forms of provision. This would include angel food, the manna that God rained down on the Israelites as they traveled through the wilderness. See Psalm 78. Once, while I was ministering along with several other speakers at a conference in Valley Harvest Church in Neenah, Wisconsin, many supernatural signs of provision began appearing in the meeting. Several people received dramatic creative miracle healings in their bodies, while others reported gemstones, including diamonds, raining down on them as they were worshiping the Lord. One night, just before I took the platform to speak, two ladies found manna visibly materializing for them on their front row seats. Although the spirit bodies of angels were unseen that night, it was apparent they were present in the meeting, bringing gifts to us from heaven. This heavenly manna seemed to be just like the bread of angels spoken about in scriptures. It was white like coriander seed and tasted like wafers made with honey. I have heard testimonies from many people around the world who have received the supernatural gift, and I think it's unusual but absolutely wonderful. That evening, several people took the manna as their bread for communion along with water that had supernaturally been turned into a heavenly wine. What an experience we had in the glory of the Lord. These are the things that happen when the angels of provision make their presence known. And I'm going to stop there and we'll do another one, okay? God bless you.